guys, coming at you with another video today on this Friday. I hope you guys are having a fantastic start to your long weekend. Um, today I wanted to address something in my previous video um, and, and with anxiety in and of itself because it, it's, it's the reoccurring cycle, you know, of anxiety that really gets to people and that's what kind of causes, I think, the depression stage of it. Um, the panic attack onset suck, but dealing with that for a long time can put a lot of stress on the mind and, and honestly kind of kind of causes that second stage, which I think is depression. Now, that's not for everyone. That's just kind of what, what happened with me. So when I talk about my last video as a great achievement, it truly was. It was truly one of my greatest life achievements to pass um, regulatory exams that it was not my skill set and I had to work for it and I pulled it off and I didn't even, I, I had chances to fail and retake the test and I didn't even do that. I passed them all three straight away, which was extremely satisfying <laughs> and, and, and great. Like I moved on. So with that, what's really, really cool is the fact that, um, When this happens, you have a high. You know, you, you built up for this, and you know, I was so focused on this. You know, that that it took up my time, and it was a great thing. I was learning, I was educating myself about subjects that that really could help with my job. Well, the issue with that over time is, once it's over, yes, it's great, but you know, this is where a lot of people kind of fall into ruts after you know, high school or college, and, and this is just my opinion, I'm not a doctor or anything, but we're in so ingrained in technology and stuff like that. And once you get through high school and college, there's goals in college. You wanna get a diploma for both. You wanna get a degree, you wanna get a job, and you're working your way through that. And, you know, that that was a huge goal for me, and, and, and playing well in golf and stuff like that. So that was my kind of distraction through my anxiety and I didn't really have too much in high school and college um, but then once I reached that point where I had a job but I didn't really like what I was doing that's when everything kind of came to a screeching halt because I didn't really have any goals anymore with golf or with school or with grades or anything like that I just went to work it became a process go to work it's like that Spongebob episode where Squidward goes to work plays his thing does yoga and it just cycle repeats anew and he just gets worse and worse and worse every day because he's just bored. You have to do something different in the cycle. Whether that is, you know, creating new goals throughout the day. It doesn't necessarily, it doesn't have to be like consistent. Consistency is key. But if you're doing the same thing over and over and over again, that is kind of toxic to you. It can take a lot. It can take a huge toll, not only on yourself, but the, it could be the people around you. And so once I completed this test, you know, I was so happy, you know, super high, you know, and, and a few days after I just kind of like, I want to study, but there's nothing to study anymore. You know, I, I enjoyed persevering through that test. And, you know, it sounds dumb that I actually want to study that dry material, but I kind of did because it put me in that mindset of what I needed to do, that killer instinct that that I had to pull this off. It was a do or die situation, but it, it, it gave me a rush and it was it was fulfilling um, and it was it was just a different experience and I enjoyed that. In order to achieve more stuff like that, I need to put forward more goals. And this is where the anxiety cycle repeats anew. Is when you kind of fall flat, and I think this is anxiety suffers fall flat the most is idle time. Idle time is your worst killer where you're just kind of on your phone, you're not doing much, and it just becomes a topic where you start doing toxic things that don't really benefit your life and don't really men mentally help you out at all. It hurts your mental psyche. Um, and over time, it takes its toll. It sucks. It's not fun. Uh, eventually, it can cause more depression you know these episodes that you just it just doesn't feel good you're just like ah I kind of feel worthless so going forward you know 
I have to set more goals. What do I want to do now? Well, I want to improve certain things with golf because I'm going to be able to play a lot more golf, which is fantastic. I absolutely love playing golf, um, and I have a huge opportunity at the place I'm with. Um, I want to continue to excel in my work, which I made goals the day after. Um, I have to excel mentally, so doing things to help me out. Stretching is one of the big goals that I've taken over because I know how beneficial stretching can be for longevity, being able to do things, hitting the golf ball farther, which is a huge perk for me, and just overall just feeling better. Meditation, you know, self-improvement as far as building my body up, you know, maybe lifting a little bit more weights. And for me, with the situations and things going on, I know it's tough to socialize as much, but I'm trying to start reaching out to friends that I haven't reached out in a while. There's a few that reached out recently because I passed the test. And I, and I also just wanted to reach out to other people. And it that, that can go a long ways, you know, especially during these times where you're just sitting at home, you're quarantined, you know, you're either working from home, you're out of work, you know. You have to continue to try to be active. I know what everyone's saying, but there's ways to be active and productive in society without integrating yourself full, fully. Uh, that That's not an excuse, to be honest. I don't care what kind of science you follow. Um, and over time, obviously that's going to get better as things continue to improve, hopefully. Another thing is with this and you know, for me personally, and and it could be kind of a catalyst for me, is, you know, do I feel lonely sometimes? Yeah, I guess, you know, I've been single for the past year, you know, haven't really had too many relationships. I've gone out on a few dates, but it's not like I've really tried to put a lot of effort into growing relation, a romantic relationship. And that would be great. I think that would be fun to do maybe over the summer or something like that, meet someone. I just, for me personally, I really struggle with finding someone online or at a bar or somewhere like going out and stuff. I just don't feel like that's fulfilling for me. And maybe I do, maybe, and, and I'm not judging any people that do. That's just not something that I want to do. So that weighs on my mental psyche a little bit as well because it's just like, I, it's kind of funny because I have two roommates and, uh, you know, both of them just got out of a relationship around a week ago and they're already starting to hang out with new people. I'm just like, damn, okay, all right. Um, so, you know, that, that wears on me and an idle time can wear on me. Um, you know, and that's frustrating because it's just like, you know, I just achieved something that I probably won't like ever achieve again. And I did it so quickly and faster than anyone else and impressed my boss and stuff like that. Just a lot of positive things, which is fantastic. I love it. It just, it, it, it's one of those things where for me, it sucks when I feel even slightly down because it's just like, why could I possibly feel down in this moment? Um, but I think there's a lot of negative factors in society that have pushed that. Um, and going over some things to improve. And what I mean by idle time, I mean, sitting on your phone for hours is just so meaningless. Absolutely meaningless. There is so much toxic stuff on on social media and stuff. It just, you'll, when you when you limit it, oh my gosh, it's, it's so truly fulfilling. But I understand how it can be addicting and it's easy to connect. There are definitely positives to the phone, but they definitely just, they can, can consume you. Um, you know, not working out, not being active, just makes you feel, just makes you feel like garbage. And especially in a time like this, you don't really want to feel like garbage because you then think that you could have other things must not be named. And that's no fun either. Um, and, and just distancing yourself completely. Like I know that it's safe to do, to stay home and stuff, but you know, it's tough to live in a society uh, it, I don't care how introvert you are. Genuine human connection is is huge, and if you don't really put invest too much time into that, it could take its toll on you. It's not fun, you know. I enjoy talking with people. Um, I enjoy being with people, um, and whether that like I play a lot of Call of Duty. I've been playing a lot of Warzone, but I've literally every time I get on there, I don't play alone. 
I don't play alone anymore. Like, it's not fun. I play with friends. Um, I play with family. Like, I really enjoy that. That's I get more joy out of the social interactions with that game than anything else. So, anyways, guys, I just kind of wanted to make a video on that. I think it's just, just about the anxiety cycle. Um, and, and how to kind of bounce back from that. I'm, I'm not perfect by any means. And this video didn't really have a direct topic, but just discussing, you know, about idle time. You gotta, gotta stay away from it with anxiety. Um, and if you can, I, I think you're really close to really achieving a better life um, and feeling better about yourself overall. So, hope you guys enjoy. Peace. Oh.